Welcome to the world of material science. My name is Professor Bonnet. This video will introduce you to the Mona Lisa of material science. Meet the iron carbon phase diagram. The iron carbon binary system forms the basis for all steels and cast iron materials. The mechanical properties of steel and cast iron materials can be changed in vast ranges of different degrees of strength. This is closely related to the transformation behavior of the iron lattice and the specific interactions between carbon and the two crystal structures of iron, namely body-centered cubic and face-centered cubic. Moreover, iron and carbon can develop metastable or stable phase depending on the boundary conditions, thus permitting the production of good ferrous materials with mechanical properties adapted to the respective application. Hence, knowledge of the iron carbon phase diagram with its phases and their related properties is a basis for understanding the behavior of all steels and cast iron materials. With a share of 4.7%, iron is the second most common metal in the Earth's crust after aluminum. As we have seen in Chapter 2, Designation of Steel Part 1, of the European standard EN 10020 defines steel as a material consisting mainly of iron with a maximum carbon content of 2%. The mass fraction of iron is greater than that of any other element. Currently more than 2500 steel grades are available. This is due to the fact that there are various possibilities to modify the properties of steel, either by heat treatment or with the help of alloying elements. Iron is one of the few polymorphous metals. That is to say, it exists in different types of crystals. Unlike most other metals, the cooling curve of pure iron obtained by Sermon analysis does not show one but three arrest points. Pure iron solidifies at 1536 degrees Celsius forming crystals with a body-centered cubic lattice, the so-called delta iron. Here the first arrest point occurs. At 1401 degrees Celsius, the more densely packed face-centered cubic lattice, the gamma iron, appears. Here the second arrest point occurs. Although it is not the solidification that takes place, but an exothermic solid-solid transition. After further cooling, another lattice transition into a body-centered cubic structure, the alpha iron, takes place at 911 degrees Celsius. However, compared to the delta iron, which also has a body-centered cubic structure, the alpha iron has smaller lattice constants. It exists down to the lowest temperatures. At a certain temperature, the ferromagnetic or ferroelectric properties of a sample will have disappeared completely, so that it will only be paramagnetic above that point. This temperature is called the Curie temperature. For iron, this temperature is at 769 degrees Celsius, so that the Sermon analysis shows a discontinuity at this point. However, another lattice transition does not occur. The transition at the arrest point AR3 at 911 degrees Celsius, that is to say the transition from gamma to alpha iron, is of particular importance. As can be seen in this figure, the transition takes place with minimal movement of the atoms. At the same time, this results in a measurable increase in volume. Of all the crystal types of iron, two are of particular importance for steels. At room temperature and at lower temperatures, the properties and the behavior of steel are determined by the alpha iron, or so-called ferrite. It has, as we have already seen, a body-centered 
cubic lattice. At higher temperatures, above the rest point A R3, which are reached when the material is hot worked by forging, for instance, gamma iron, the so-called austenite, occurs. Due to its face-centered cubic structure, it has the highest packing density. Moreover, it is characterized by excellent ductility and a slightly higher thermal expansion. It is non-magnetic and dissolves considerably more carbon in the solid solution. Although the body-centered cubic alpha iron features a lower packing density, the existing lattice vacancies are only very small and allow only atoms with a diameter of 15% of iron to be absorbed within without stress. So I want to draw the body-centered cubic lattice to further illustrate this behavior. So here we see the body-centered cubic lattice and we see that we only have very, very small lattice vacancies. The more densely packed face-centered cubic gamma iron, on the other hand, has fewer but larger vacancies, which could absorb atoms with a diameter of up to 41% of iron without stress. This explains why the maximum solubility of carbon in ferrite is only up to 0.02%, but in austenite up to 2.06%. So therefore, I also want to draw the face-centered cubic lattice and as we can see here we have much larger vacancies. The complete iron carbon phase diagram can be seen here. It shows the phase boundaries for all concentrations between 0 and 100 percent carbon content at any given temperature. At high carbon concentrations, however, the material mostly consists of graphite and is unsuitable as a constructional material. Interesting from a technical point of view are only carbon concentrations of lower 6.67%. This is why the area enclosed by the dashed lines is usually shown in detail. If we zoom in on this area, of up to 7 weight percent carbon, we will obtain a portion of the iron carbon phase called the iron, iron carbide phase diagram. This shows the stable system for an infinitely slow cooling process during which carbon precipitates out as graphite. We have already seen the pure iron solidifies to form crystals with a body center cubic lattice, the so-called delta iron at a temperature of 1536 degrees Celsius. At 1401 degrees Celsius, it transitions to a more densely packed face-centered cubic lattice, the gamma iron. After further cooling, another lattice transition into a body-centered cubic structure, the alpha iron takes place at 911 degrees Celsius. Thus, in the two-phase area between delta and gamma iron, delta and gamma iron must be present, just as in the two-phase area between gamma iron and alpha iron, gamma and alpha iron must be present. Above the liquidus line there is of course melt. This means that in the two-phase area between melt and delta iron, there must be both melt and delta iron present. And the two-phase area between melt and gamma iron must also contain both melt and gamma iron. Given that carbon is soluble in iron, to a certain extent, but iron is insoluble in carbon, carbon participates out as graphite. Thus, the remaining phase fields are melt and graphite, gamma solid solution and graphite, and finally alpha solid solution and graphite. When dealing with cast iron, and grey cast iron in particular, we have to concentrate on the stable iron-carbon phase diagram. When dealing with steel, however, 
we are only interested in the metastable system of iron and iron carbide. As you can see, the phase diagram also indicates the proportion of cementite below the carbon scale. Cementite is an intermetallic compound of iron and carbon with the formula Fe3C, which is characterized by high strength and hardness, but also by a low degree of toughness. A carbon content of 6.67 corresponds to a cementite content of 100%. This is, explains why the iron-iron carbide phase diagram ends here. We have already heard that the gamma solid solution is also called arsenide and that the alpha solid solution is referred to as ferrite. But also the structural constituents resulting from the three phases arsenide, ferrite and cementite have their own names. We recognize the region at high temperatures and a high cementite mass content as a system with decreasing limited solubility in the solid state. In other words, it is an eutectic system. For the iron-carbon system, the eutectic point is at 4.3% carbon and a temperature of 1147 degrees Celsius. If we imagine the lever arm drawn in the, into the diagram, we can derive that arsenide and cementite each make about half of the eutectic structure. This was named Lederbrite after the person who discovered it, the metallurgist Karl Heinrich Adolf Lederbur. Due to its high cementite content, Lederbrite is strong and hard, but also brittle. The area at low temperature and low cementite mass content in the phase diagram also reminds us of a system with decreasing limited solubility in the solid state. Unlike the eutectic system, the transformation does not start from the components dissolved in each other in the melt, but from the components dissolved in each other in the solid state, the arsenide. As this system is very similar to the eutectic, it is called eutectoid. The eutectoid point is at 0.8% carbon and a transformation temperature of 723 degrees Celsius. This eutectoid structure is called perlite and consists mostly of soft, tough ferrite layered with cementite lamella, which considerably increase its hardness and strength. At high temperatures and low carbon content, we can see an area which looks like an eutectic system turned upside down at 0.16% carbon and 1,493 degrees Celsius. Delta ferrite and the remaining melt transform into austenite. This type of system is referred to as peritactic. However, it is only of minor importance for the technical use of steel. This leads us to the explain the different types of cementite. Cementite which crystallizes from the melt, that is to say below the line CD in the iron carbon phase diagram, is called primary cementite or C1. Secondary cementite, C2, develops by precipitation out of the austenite, that is to say when the temperature drops below the line SEF. Tertiary cementite, C3, precipitates out of the ferrite below the line PQK. Of course, the proportion of tertiary cementite can only be negligibly small, which is why it is sometimes left out completely in the literature. As it may not be easy to remember all the names and numeric values of the iron-iron carbide phase diagram all at once, it might be helpful to remember the two value pairs 4.3% and 1147 degrees Celsius for the eutectic system and 0.8% carbon at 723 degrees Celsius for the eutectoid point. This can provide you with some orientation. If we place both diagrams, the iron carbon phase diagram, 
for the stable system and the iron iron carbide diagram for the metastable system on top of each other, we will see a slight shift of some points and phase boundaries. Most ferrous alloys used in engineering contain other alloying elements alongside carbon, which may signif significantly, significantly, so significantly, muss ich auch die Betonung machen. If we place both diagrams, the iron carbon phase diagram for the stable system and the iron iron carbide diagram for the metastable system on top of each other, we will see a slight shift of some points and phase boundaries. Most ferrous alloys used in engineering contain other alloying elements alongside carbon, which may significantly change the properties and the microstructure. As a result, the temperature dependent structural changes, the proportions and the structure types cannot be reliably determined from the iron carbon phase diagram. Nonetheless, the iron carbon phase diagram can provide some important and general insights. I know this was quite a lot of new information all at once. In the next video, we will look at the individual sections of the iron carbon phase diagram for the metastable system and go through them step by step in order to understand which processes will take place where and which microstructure will result. See you then and goodbye.